Ben Simmons. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. Welcome back to the Lunchtime Catch-Up Podcast. My name is Grant Hill. With me is Scott McNeese. Hello, listeners. This week on the show, we're going to do something different. We're not going to review the uh, Essendon Demons game, because as I think we pretty much all realise, we got exactly the same as we got on Anzac Day. And we really just don't want to. And we're just it's too really depressing. sick of, of going from position to position and explaining how they got beaten. So tonight we're going to do something different. Scott has worked his magic again and has managed to get us an incredible guest um, on the show tonight to talk a bit more about Essendon. Who have we got, Scotty? Yeah, um, really appreciate this. We are able to get Callum Toomey from AFL.com. Uh, a lot of people will know Callum Toomey. He's brilliant on the um, draft. So every time the national draft comes around, everyone's looking for Callum Toomey's phantom thread. So great to have him online. He's got obviously experience and, and knowledge on, on a lot of our younger players. Um, he's written a, a really interesting article today about where the Essendon Club is, uh, which I highly re- recommend you go out and um, read it. So we just wanted to have a discussion with him. He's a passionate Essendon man himself. A lot of people always see him at training, always scouting our boys. So as you know, most people will be uh, online just to and listening to us to make to actually hear Cal. So we won't muck around too much. We'll get Cal to me on the line and we'll go right now. Okay, on the line we have Cal Toomey from AFL.com. How are you going, Cal? Good evening, fellas. It's uh, I'd probably be liking to join you on a podcast after a win, for the bomber's sake. But alas, uh, we chat after a loss. But good to have uh, good to have a chat. Thanks for joining us, mate. Look, you've you've actually written. It's, the timing is perfect because you, you've you've wrote an article today in in the AFL website, and it's called "What's Going Wrong at Bomberland." You've you've sort of had a uh, a bit of commentary about our defense and, and and offense and everything like that. What kind of can you just talk around your own article and what things were coming to mind? Well, the article sort of came about. I did work at yesterday's game, well, the, the game against the Demons on Sunday, um, in a sort of uh, professional sense. Obviously, I think most people know I do I do very performance have a soft <laughs> yep. for them, but um, I did work for AFL dot com and cover the game for them and, and have covered sort of three of the last four I think that Essendon have played in so I've seen a couple of shockers in that time and I guess the reality is that they've been really ordinary and, and obviously the last week has been two particularly poor performances and um, that's where the article came from I mean the question sort of arose out of uh, the John Westfold press conference and I, I did ask John after the game he said that, look this lapse happened in the third quarter and and, and so forth and I just asked a simple question of why and, and that sort of got the answer that they weren't quite sure why, why, why that was happening and I guess the whole article was about well nobody's quite sure about what's happening in Essendon is it is it personnel well the personnel looks pretty good on paper you've got seven all Australians in that team on the weekend is it um, the coaching well I guess there's potentially some question marks around how um, adaptive that the coaching panel is on game day, but still they have some pretty good players at their disposal. Yeah. Uh, is it the is it the the game plan? Uh, is it the attitude of some of the players? I think I, I put in the article that I, I I didn't put this in the article. I could only think of one player I think who's improved on last year so far, and that's James Stewart. I think Andy McGrath would probably be about the same level, and he's playing under some sort of different circumstances, being more of a midfielder than a halfback. But apart from those two. I don't think there's any player at Essendon who was there last year who's there now who's improved on last year's performances. So I think that's where it sits at the moment. And I did say in the story that the season's not over, and it, and it certainly isn't. And, and John was pretty um, forthright in, in that view when I did ask him after the game about the expectations around the club. And, yeah. and he said, well, is, is that out of reach now? And I said, well, no, it's not. But uh, the next sort of month will be pretty critical to whether the Bombers can get back to the finals and, and go a bit further. So that's where the article came from today. Um, it seemed like a... It seemed like it resonated with a few Essendon supporters. Maybe some disagreed a little bit and said, I didn't sort of um, mention the fact that they did lose so much experience last year in, in Watson and Stanton and Hockey and, and James Kelly. I did point out that Kelly was a big loss. I don't think yeah, Joe was the is. biggest loss, to be, to be fair, but I think Joe last year was sort of um, well well gone. He's past his best, and particularly French Stanton as well. He's barely in the team anyway. Same with Heath Hawking. So the experience argument sort of doesn't wash as much, apart from Kelly and maybe a little bit of Joe. But that's sort of where the article came from. And, and yeah, that's you can if someone hasn't read it, you can read it on afl.com.au in full. I think some of the concerns from fans is 
when you talk about the the Job leaving and the Hocking, is it's not so much that they're on their form because their form last year, let's be honest, was not that great. But I guess from a leadership standpoint, and Kelly's a big one in this, I I haven't seen a strong kind of leadership feel to the club this year on field. Um, no, I think that's probably fair. That's probably fair. I mean, uh, I don't think Dyson Apple was a really consistent player, and uh, in, uh, he might have reached his capacity as a player though in the midfield. But maybe his leadership still has, has some improvement to go. I think Joe can be a, a leader by example, but his form has just been so far from what we hope he would be able to produce this year that he has to probably worry about himself more than anyone else at this point. Uh, and, and Zach's another sort of lead by example player in terms of Zach Merritt. So look, they maybe are lacking a little bit of that, but again, as I said, Joe was really the only one that was playing last year at that bunch that left. James Kelly has been a massive loss in a couple of scenarios in that in losing him, I think more responsibility has fallen to the likes of Connor McKenna and Adam Saad to be that, that last kick out of the half back line and really set things up. And I think those two have struggled with that responsibility. I think yeah. they've sort of panicked at times a fair bit. I'm, I'm still not sure about Saad uh, in terms of his recruitment and where he sits compared to the other two recruits. I'm a lot more bullish on those two than what I've seen from Saad at this point. But um, I think that's where Kelly's sort of absence has really hurt as well. As McGrath too, because McGrath and Kelly were probably the two most steady um, smaller types down there last year and McGrath sort of moved into the midfield. It's meant a, a lot of things have relied on Michael Hurley in the back half and he can't do everything. Yeah, and I think, get your opinion on whether or not Marty Gleeson has had an effect as well in that <clears throat> I, I kind of agree with what you were saying. I think Brendan, I don't remember seeing Brendan Goddard. Brendan's a, a fiery bloke and will tee off every now and then, but I don't remember him sort of teeing off as often um, last year as he did this year, probably because he had Pops Kelly down there um, directing traffic and doing all the right things. And then you had a, a talented kid like McGrath down the back just feeding off those two blokes who were doing the majority of the work. I kind of agree with what you're saying in that that back line now without the experience of, uh, of Kelly um, down there to, to really sort of act as that general and make really smart footy decisions has hurt. Couple that with Marty Gleeson, who was making some half decent sort of intercept marks and some good decisions down there, and the backline is, yeah, I think it's 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 a bit sus with regards to Sard and and, and uh, McKenna. They're great; they can run off the back. That's that's really good. Um, but yeah, I think I think the, the back, the smalls in the backline, and especially with um, Bagley um, having a, a few problems recently, um, I think yeah. we've got um, we've got some issues in there. Um, well, I think I think you're right. I mean, Gleeson's been a loss and probably an understated loss yeah. from most parties outside of Essendon. I think they probably knew the extent of the, the hole that he'd leave when he was injured, but I don't think many people would sort of realise the progress he did make last year. He was playing on the Greywall at some point last year, yeah. and he could play on a small as well. So, And I, I guess you measure composure by how you feel in the stands. And if um, you guys are fans, and when you sit there and, and see James Kelly with the ball, you generally feel like he's going to do the right thing with it. Andy McGrath, you felt that from day one. I don't think too many people at the ground on Sunday and too many people this year would would feel the same way when Saad and McKenna have the ball. You're just not sure. They're very exciting. And I think they're going to be good players for us, uh, the club long term. But I think at, uh, at the moment, there's still that sort of level head needed around them. One, one player that I think Essendon need to introduce, and I know his form in the VFL hasn't been striking, but as far as kicking to advantage for the team's sake, Jordan Ridley, to me, is a player where when I think he gets the ball, I go, good, something good's going to happen. And he normally hits up the ground, 40-meter passes, um, and obviously he's a solid defender. But I just get the feeling it's it's actually time, even if he hasn't set the world on fire yet, to start introducing this kid to senior footy, just for ball use, if anything. Yeah, I'm... Um... I agree. I, I did put that in the article today that I think uh, he should be given a chance. And you're right, he can kick the footy and that's what he's known for. He's lightly framed at the moment and I think the AFL game might actually suit him a little bit better than how VFL is played and that sort of is the case sometimes. Yeah. Uh, I think the, the Bombers with that second round pick a couple of years ago, was well, the 2016 draft, they, they grabbed Jordan and the pick before him, I think, from memory, was Alex Witherden. Well, the pick after him was Alex Witherden. So the Bombers did have the chance to go with uh, Ridley or Witherden. I think they... Um, were among a few clubs that had some concerns about Witherden's body after he did break his leg in his draft year. Yeah, I guess the irony is the irony is that uh, Alex has played 
you know, two, four years maybe nearly or so far and been fit the whole way through and Jordan's had, you know, a couple of really serious Back injuries here, in his yeah. time last and, and hasn't got a run at it. So, uh, and with it and sort of the play that you look at the Bombers and you think, well, geez, they could use a kicker off half back like that. So <laughs> yeah. hopefully for Essendon's sake, he does come good because otherwise... Uh, that sort of draft decision might come back to be a sliding door sort of one. But look, I think he's got some talent for sure. and I'm with you guys. I'd like to see him blooded soon. I think the kicking area is something I've been thinking about all week. And and I'm, I hope this sounds okay, but there's some younger players. And I'm going to mention guys like Darcy Parrish, and I'm even going to mention Kobe Much, um, and a little bit of McGrath. And, and these obviously future kind of midfield. Dylan Clark, I can add into that as well. My only concern is is I don't know if any of them can kick over 40, 45 metres. And and they, te- they tend to have a game plan where it's a little bit handball and kick left and right um, and, and a little bit panicky. McGrath's a little bit better. Um, but that's my... For the future, I must admit, I do have a little bit of concern because I actually find a Kyle Langford actually looks to kick a little bit more aggressively. Um, by nature, and I, I've had all this this argument where people talk about BJ, and he always has like a <coughs> one obvious turnover. But I always have this argument personally, me, and I'll be interested in what you think. That his kicking is actually much more aggressive and looks to at least complement an offensive move that at least sh- c- would concern the opposition rather than kicking twenty, thirty meters left and right that we waste so much possession and the whole defense sets up for the opposition. Yeah, I'm a BJ fan. Uh, I think he's been great for Essendon. And look, I'm happy for uh, the outburst at, at the at the sort of product that he ends up have, has been given to to what the Bombers over five years. I think he's been a stellar recruit and and probably agree. deserves to and probably deserves to be a little bit angry at how it's all played out, but hasn't shown that at all. So apart from on the field, sometimes where a kick goes wrong. And I, I agree with you as well. He he does try things with his kicking. And I sort of had this criticism on Twitter. Last week with Dyson Apple, I think you know he can get the ball thirty times, but you just wouldn't know it because the chips go so- the chips go sideways or up or small. Or- so yeah. I'm, I sort of I'm a little bit with you on in terms of the next bash coming through as well. I think there's a couple of guys in there that will want to improve their kicking. I know Darcy has um, sort of evened up his handball to show in the last week or so, yep. um, and that's something that I think you you'll probably want to do more of and the kick a little bit more. Looking back at his under eight under eighteen footy, it's sort of it might just be a confidence thing as well. I mean. I think they stunted Darcy Parrish's progress last year a little bit. I think they spent left him on a half forward half forward, too yeah. much. Yeah, I agree. Um, he, he started most games on the bench. He's sort of the first one out of the rotation. I think there's probably concerns that he, Merritt and Heppel were too small in the midfield. So, you know, they went and got Devin Smith, who's the same size or smaller. <laughs> but anyway, um, <laughs> look, but I think that sort of has hurt his progress a little bit as a midfielder. I think his first year as a midfielder, he, he showed no signs of that and he had the the will on the, the license to go and win the footy. And last year, when with the big guns back, I guess you could say, um, that sort of changed a little bit in how he attacked it. So I think he's sort of cost... Well, they've cost him a little bit of time there. So he's maybe a little bit further back than he might have otherwise been. But I, I think I'm pretty confident that Darcy will have a really strong career for the Bombers in yeah. the midfield and be a, a Rory Sloan type of midfielder in time. And look, Rory Sloan's not the most damaging long kick you'll ever see, but he's a star of a player. So yeah, that's true. That's, that's true. always... That's, that's always the sort of player that I've thought Darcy played like. Yep. And now, my question on Kyle Langford. Now, oh, yep. <laughs> I, Kyle Langford to me is the whipping boy of the Essendon Football Club. <laughs> Between him and Michael Hartley, if anything goes wrong, they're just dropped. Now, a couple of questions for you. A, is there, a, is there an AFL midfielder there? Um, be there sort of, I mean, Essendon want him to be a bigger bodied mid, that's fine. A, is there an AFL um Big bodied mid there, do you think? And B, what do you think they should do with with Carl? I think they should just say to him, "Listen, mate, we're going to give you six games. Um, win, lose, or draw. You're playing in the next six games. And at the end of those six games, we're going to have a look at what you've done. And if you deserve it, you'll play a seventh. I'd love to know what you think we should do with Carl. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I uh, I think I mean look at look at last year. Essendon lost to Brisbane in that terrific performance at Eddie Ad and he was the only one who got dropped. They lost to Fremantle in round two this year. He was the only one who got dropped. Yeah. They were pretty all pretty all pretty ordinary that, that night at Optus and to be honest, the, the week before was probably his best game. Yeah, um, I know. 
He's yeah. had, had about 23, I think, and a fair few of those were contested. Look, A, uh, is he a midfielder? I, I don't know, because who would know? I don't know if he's going to be an AFL player or not, but at least give him a chance. Give him a go. Uh, you know, six to, I'm, I agree, agree completely with you. I think he's the first one out when something goes bad. And, you know, the, the sort of the, the buck has stopped with him for some reason. Yeah. He's a fourth year player, and you never really. I had a look at, I think, the most games he's played in a row is about six, six or seven, and yeah. that was. But that was in 2016, though, so that's sort of yeah. one of those years. It's always got an asterisk on it. On it. So, look, I think, um, oh, I don't know if he's going to be good enough. I don't know if there's a midfielder in him. I don't know if he's going to be sort of agile enough to be a half forward. He doesn't, he is a little bit reactive in the way he moves, I must say. He probably needs to be a little bit more um, on the go. But that's sort of just one of those things, I guess, that um, you don't know if you don't know. And at the moment, maybe maybe the Bombers think they do know, and they think that he's not going to get there. Yeah. Maybe they've seen more than seen more than what we've seen. But I agree. Give him a go, five six weeks, and say, look, you're in. Here's some confidence. Um, otherwise, uh, he's had a contract at the end of this year. Would be surprised if they held on to him if they're not going to be able to um, blood him at any point this season. And that's the thing. I mean, it's uh, it's. I don't quite know what they're going to do with him. And I think what you were just sort of saying then in that I don't know if he's going to be a um, an AFL footballer. I don't know if he's going to be this. I, I think that's because we play him for a game and then drop him. We don't, we don't know. We, we can't sit there and look at him for three weeks in a row and go, geez, yeah, he's not so good against the big boys. Okay, let's put him at half forward and play him for half a dozen games there and see what happens. I just, uh, yeah, I'm just worried for Kyle. The man gets leather poisoning in the VFL. Um, 30 touches, 30 touches, 30 touches, in the best on the on the ground, and then comes up and we give him a game and a half. That's really got to, that's really got to ruin the kid. Um, well, yeah, I mean, he's an early pick as well. And, yeah. Um, I guess you look at, that's sort of what is hurting Essen at the moment as well. You know, fourth year player and then the third year player. So the 2014 draft, the 2015 draft, that's six picks in the top 30 and only one, Darcy Parrish, is the player that you could at the moment have any confidence that he's going yeah. to get there. Yeah. Um, one out of six is not a good strike rate. And um, Laverde was good on the weekend and I'm bullish on him. Again, yeah. injuries have sort of stopped us from saying if he's going to get there and be good enough. But I think there's enough there. Um, but we, you, you can't say that with any confidence either. Uh, Langford doesn't seem to be in the team of Essendon's thoughts. No. Uh, Mason Redmond, uh, you'd have to yeah. say, is going to struggle to get there at this point. Uh, and Alex Morgan's gone. And, and Aaron Francis, well, who knows? Who knows? So yeah, exactly we, right. we hope. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not. We hope, yeah. But it's, it's, it's not a good thing is it, when you get one out of six top 30s over two years. And they're the type of guys that you'd hope to be sort of pushing you along at this point. Yeah. All right, so back down the other end of the ground, um, Joey Danaher. In my opinion, and I think most people would have to agree, he's one of the best young forwards in the comp. Six foot five or whatever he is, can jump clean out of Eddie Head Stadium and can't kick to save his life, but we'll ignore that for the minute. I just, I, I worry with Essendon's entries into forward 50 being so rushed, being bombed in with no real plan or along the lines. Honestly, I think we're wasting one of the best young forwards in this comp because I think we had a quick chat just before we came on air before is that I find Joey Danaher having to dive and take up huge chunks of Eddie Head Stadium with his knees um, to catch balls and when the balls bond in there everybody knows it's going to be bombed in there so they all hang around Joe Danaher and pound the, the poor kid I just I'm really worried and, and love to get your opinion on if that's the case, and at the moment where we're, we're just bombing it into Joe and we're not getting an effective use out of one of the best young forwards in the comp, should he go into the ruck more? Should we put him at centre-half forward more? Should we do a, an old-fashioned Richo and run him up up, uh, up a wing or something to get him involved and get those marks? It might be you know, half dependent on what he wants to do himself in some ways because if he's not willing to work up the ground and, and show that same sort of intensity up the field, then it's not going to work any either way or whichever way you, you put him or wherever you place him. I did think on the weekend that you probably could have got more out of him by pushing up the ground. And you know you've got this player who's arguably your, your top two or three best players. He's probably easily your best match winner. And you've got him. And he doesn't get the ball because you know the ball's not down there enough. So there's a lot of the time where you're not anywhere near it. And you're right, he just gets outnumbered. So look, I mean, in saying this last year. He, it's it's been a problem for six weeks. Last year it wasn't a problem, so yeah, yeah, I'm willing to give him. Get it. It's, it's only been six weeks, and I'm willing to give him a, a fair bit longer because he was outstanding last year, and and he did have some interruptions over the preseason as well. He which did. sort of didn't get a lot of traction, but um, 
has did to sort of help hold him back a fair bit. Yep. And I don't think that's been spoken about a whole lot. So that that might be in the running for one of the reasons why it just hasn't clicked for Joe at this point. I don't think the ruck is a great thing for him. I, just, I think, you know, if, if you're going to use him around the ball, play him as an extra midfielder almost. I don't, yeah. I don't like him in the ruck too much. No, I don't want to see but, an ACL happen. No. So I, I, look, I can see the frustration because you've got this player who's an absolute star and, and will be a star. He's going through a slump at the moment. I, I think he'll be fine. I'm not... I'm not overly worried about him in terms of the whole sort of setup. No, I, I, I don't think the um, the midfielders are going to be on Joey's um, Christmas card ledges at the minute because he, <laughs> no. he, he can't go some and get it himself. On the weekend. Yeah. yeah, my God, some of those kicks on the weekend. I, I think. I mean, Mike Welby's well, been quite good over the first couple of weeks, yep. but he, and you don't want to burn a kid who's three games in. But uh, geez, there was one on the outer wing there. I think that um, <laughs> he had about five meters on his opponent, Joe, and, and had to pick it up off his toes and get there and it's just uh, put it up in the air mate that's right, that's why I keep looking at the kid going if if you hit Joey Danaher lace out not lace out not even lace out like chuck it way up in the air but don't make him run forward for the ball and then have to stop prop and lean back into his defenders because I could punch it if it, when it came to that sort of situation. Yeah. Um, but if, yeah. you, if you hit the guy on a lead, there's no defender in the comp that will get a hand anywhere near Joey Danaher's arms extended. It, it, it It's really frustrating that the midfield sort of entries into forward 50 is as bad as I've, I've seen at the club ever. Yeah, well... It... Jeez, there's been a few ordinary years. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. That may be a big statement. We, we say that with they, um, we say with that with current current emotion. I, yeah. They they really struggled during the herd era to make the most of their inside fifty entries. To be to be fair, I remember sort of yeah. covering that at the time. They had no answer. They had no idea what to do at that point. Mm. And that was when they had a fair few targets down there as well. So there's been some ordinary years. I know they do all meld into one because it's been a long uh, it's been a long thirteen or fourteen years. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah. Last I mean last year. There's a lot of positives to come out of last year. I think that's why the uh, sort of the disenchantment exists in the first six weeks of this year because no one expected days like these, did they? I mean, yeah, nobody told, Not this nobody year. told the bombs to be days like these this year because mm. um, they got the recruits. There wasn't a whole lot of players to leave the club, and we've spoken about Watson and Kelly, but you know they you wouldn't want to be pitting your premierships over those two at their no. age at that point. No. So it just doesn't sort of doesn't fit. There's, it doesn't work out why this is happening. So I think that's why people are a bit up in arms about the Bombers at the moment. Yeah, Cal, I know I know, we've got you a bit over time. I've just got one more question. And this is what I discussed on the podcast last week. And I must admit, it's one of those nervous ones that I talk about. It's, it is about game plan. And I... Personally, me, I, I'm one of those ones that likes to sit up on level three no matter if I've got good tickets or not because I like to see yeah. the strategy and, and how everything's playing out. I see a team that is actually quite easy to coach against um, in the way we're structured and performing. Uh, I think we're a very obvious team that likes to transition the ball from the back from one side to the other. And I just... And I think... When we can't go through the middle, where the opposition are, are just defending very, very easy, and I found that on Anzac Day as well, that Collingwood was just almost structured in walls down the ground, understanding what we were doing. What What are your thoughts around that? There is a little bit of um, how should I say this? A little bit of 2008 to 2010 um, happening at times, and when it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and when it looks great, it looks fantastic. Yeah, I think everyone knows that that sort of era. And the way the Bombers played at that point, yeah, no, I can see that. I can see that. Um, I'm not sure what the answer is. People who get paid a lot more than I do, um, it's their jobs to work out. No, well, I guess, so. I guess you asked the question and they weren't sure what the answer is. Well, so. exactly right. You've got an answer to that question, actually. <laughs> so, um, They're not sure at the moment. Look, is there yeah, any... Well, that's right. Sorry, that's right. I mean, yeah. it doesn't seem like the uh, the answers are obvious there. So yeah, um, it would be interesting to see what they do over the next, next five weeks. Yeah, yeah. We're two, two and four, and two and four, and you've got Hawthorne, Hawthorne. Carlton, Geelong, Cat, uh, uh, Giants, and then GWS, and then, yeah. and then Richmond after that as well. Yeah. So it's, uh, Fun it stuff. could be ugly, or yeah. it could be a great chance to turn it all around. Is there any? Just lastly, is there is there any um, younger players that, besides when we spoke about Ridley, that you think uh, have a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel that you know of, like in the VFL that you see? Oh, to be honest, is. Because we haven't seen too much of them 
that's, and and last year was so late with their draft picks. Look, um, Jordan Hullahan has some talent. I think it'll be a little bit of a work in progress with him. I think Much will be a pretty consistent AFL player once he gets in there yeah. uh, and, and sort of shows that he can just find the footy. Begley, I liked in terms of his power, but there was certainly a lot to go in terms of his running. Um, Clark, if they could ignore the, the sort of concern about his kicking, then he can find the footy, but I guess that's going to be a Robin Peter pay Paul situation in which they prefer and, and whether they can handle that or not. Look, there's not a there's not a whole lot out there apart from the um, the team that's been played in the last couple of weeks, and that's maybe half the concern as well. That outside that 25, 26, there's not heaps you know, banging down the door and saying, "Yeah, pick me, pick me." So um, I tell you what, though, um, just I mean, I've gone to a couple of EFL games. Zerk, Zerk Thatcher is actually quite a talented um, boy, just on little samples that I've seen. He just, you know, when some players just do little small things, you go, "Oh, that was quite classy." Like that. that could... Yeah. So just a just a little name that I thought. Well, like, the other the other one that they are very excited about, I can I can say, say that for certain, is Sam Draper, and yeah, I think we'll see yeah. him senior level pretty soon. If um, well, if, if Tom Bell Chambers is unavailable, remains a little bit sore, or because I don't think Matthew Lundberg did his stocks great service on the weekend. I mean, I know it was his first game of the year, and he's coming up against one of the, the best ruckmen in the competition. But look, there's a lot of a lot of good talk and discussion around Sam Draper and just his athleticism yeah. and aggression as well. So. So there's one there's a down. light at the end of the tunnel sometimes with the Bombers. We've got a good Ruckman coming through. <laughs> and, 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 and Louis got himself suspended for a week, I think, didn't he? So, yeah, he did, yeah. Noel. He did, yes. So, yeah. Well, we really, really appreciate Cal. I um, know I've taken up a little bit more time than I, than I said, but uh, <laughs> no we got carried away with a good chat. So, But look, we really, really appreciate your time. Um, and you can't thank you enough for coming on. Check out Cal's um, articles on afl.com.au. Um, and, yeah, we really appreciate your time tonight, um, Cal. So um, thanks for coming on the Lunchtime Catch-Up podcast. No worries at all, guys. Good on you. Thank you. Thanks, mate. That was Callum Toomey. Um, and a big thank you to Callum for, uh, for coming on the podcast at short notice for us today. Uh, well done, Scotty, for, uh, for scoring that interview. Uh, happy to help. Uh, really good thoughts. Cal Timmy's got a great football mind. Love hearing. Talk about just pulling t- stats from left and right. I know he knows. He knows Essendon back <laughs> to front. The man knows his stuff. Um, but really good interview. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. And like I said, we're not really going to go through the game uh, tonight. I think it's going to be a, a, a shorter podcast. We, we want to dedicate the majority of it to, to Callum tonight because, like I said, we're, it's just yeah. we played the same as we played on Anzac Day. Well, well, what more can we say? We were beaten across the ground. Um, I think Callum said it in his interview and when he asked Wusher the direct question, what's the matter? The man got, we don't know. So if Wusher don't know just at the moment, <laughs> and like I said, we we explained it to, Cal, uh, to Callum before we got on the um, podcast, is that we're pretty pretty positive on this podcast, apart from a certain colleague of mine who should remain nameless who came off the extended <laughs> long-ass run-up last week and teed off. But... Um, we're generally a, uh, um, a positive kind of uh, podcast for the SN and Footy Club. And I seriously remain positive because yeah. there's there's things that aren't adding up. Oh, at the we're, we're, we're mad Essendon fans. Like, we want to see the club success. Absolutely, like, I, we do. I, you know, nothing would, would please me more than winning four or five for the next five, you know. Four Absolutely. for the next five. Like, I, I, none of us want to be proven anything. We, mm-hmm. we want the team to turn around and we've got genuine talent and that's all we want. We want, we want them to... Well, I think we want the whole club to to, I guess, tackle this lack of Issue. form, lack exactly of structure, right. whatever Absolutely. you want to call it. And, and I think the, the the club, I can assure you that the club is aware of the brand and what they're putting out on the field at the moment. And they will absolutely know. From I mean, I saw some comments on um, on your Facebook page, Scotty. Um, True to the Red Sash, where people were saying, look, Xavier's more interested in off-the-field stuff about than ensuring on-field victories. That just is not true. Well, we talked to him ourselves, and yeah. and he was you could tell in his voice, he said, "I it's extremely important to me what's happening on the ground. I I genuinely believe that. It doesn't mean some of our decisions are right, though. Yeah, I, I think there's some And there's I think some it's sometimes men go, we sometimes have to go, okay, that decision wasn't right. Yep. So I think it's just more of... Of, of just making sure we correct things and and do it quite fast. You don't want the sort of the year to get away from you and then say, oh, we better do this yep. if we're kind of three and nine at the halfway mark. We, we've still got a very... I, 
it's an interesting argument about a lot of people say, oh, maybe Alyssa isn't talented. No, it, uh, you know, if you want to look at the All Australians and Rising Stars, there's eight or nine of them. So there's some pretty good KPIs. Like, yeah, that's yeah. some good metrics for our club. Like I was, I was having a look at today, today, and and Joe Danaher last year had seventy odd clangers. And I had a look at, so what has he got in his first six games? And he had 23 games last year. He's already up to 30. Yeah. And that's, they're the things you go, but I know Joe Danaher is a better player than that. Yep. Dyson Hebel has 25 already. So they're well above turnovers and clangers this year. Yep. That's an out of form thing as well. And I think that has to be acknowledged to some fans as well. That part of this is actually some stars are actually out of form. And no doubt Zach's merits is out of form. Hugely, yeah. He still might get the ball 25, 29 times, but he was doing a lot more damage last it's year. It's not all Australian damage so, from that kid. There's a, there's a little bit two-way. We are a little, we are out of form, but we're also, I still think, um, some of our structures and some of our ball movement needs a, quite a big overhaul as well. But yeah. we could talk all day. Yep. Yeah. What we'll do but, is we'll um we'll head to, we'll get our sponsors done for the uh, for the podcast. We'll head to the sponsors and we'll come back and wrap it up. All right, a word from our sponsor. Hi, are your balls not being kicked high and far enough these days? Well, why don't you call the friendly team at David Myers Left Leg? David Myers Left Leg for all your enormous ball kicking needs. David's available on a Saturday and a Sunday, most probably at Eddie Head Stadium or the MCG. Remember, for all your ball kicking needs. Trust David Myers left leg. And we can't thank David enough for those kind of sponsorships. He's a, he's a good man. Dave Myers and his uh, left leg. Um, is great a, company. Is, yeah, great new company. And uh, we're, we're really happy to have him as a sponsor on the podcast. Well, I think um, we, we can pretty much wrap up the, uh, the podcast now by just sort of saying, again, a big thank you to Callum Toomey. Um, one, one thing I wanted to sort of point out again um, on the podcast is Bomber fans... Do not throw the baby out with the bathwater, guys and girls. Um, seriously, we we know there's a problem. I can assure you, the club knows there's a problem. Um, we are going to. Uh, I mean, and the, the the guys at the club would be working as as fast as they humanly can um, to to get a uh, to turn this kind of form around. The players wouldn't be liking what they're putting out on the ground as well. So please make sure you get down to the games. Um, like and subscribe our podcast if you if you enjoyed um, tonight's podcast as well. But really make sure you get down to the game um, and support the boys because the last thing we need uh, after coming through all of the crapola that we've come through is to have um, 70,000 members turn into 65 ne- uh, next year. We're absolutely going to come out the tail end of this. There's some serious issues we've got to figure out, but we're going to come out the back end of it um, and uh, I have absolute faith in it. So... Um, that's pretty much it for the lunchtime catch-up podcast tonight. Make sure you um, subscribe to uh, iTunes and SoundCloud. Um, this episode is going to be out in sort of half hour, forty-five minutes. Um, Scotty, yes, uh, thank yes. you for that. Let's cr- let's cross the Scotty when he's completely not ready. <laughs> I was just dozing off then. Uh, no, not really. <laughs> Uh, yeah, thanks everyone. Um, love to get your emails. Where can they get their emails? Uh, the, you can get the emails at um, the Lunchtime Catch Up Podcast at gmail.com. We're getting some really good emails from you guys telling us that um, we're incredibly handsome, sound awesome on the radio, and all that sort of good stuff. Keep all of that coming. Um, um, yeah, we really like your feedback. Any sort of ideas that you've got, we had some reasonable uh, feedback on the on the sponsor last week so um, we went out and got another one today thank you David Myers left leg um, so yeah pretty much that's the end of the podcast and we'll catch you guys next week thanks a lot guys and hopefully a win against the Hawks but yes go Bombers <laughs> thanks go Bombers bye